Introduction to Bonding and Lewis Dot Diagrams. All right, so in this series of videos, we're going to talk about how atoms join together to make a new compound, basically a species with a new identity. And this is going to happen by these atoms joining together with something called chemical bonds. And in, in particular, we're going to talk about covalent bonds, which is sharing electrons. So the first thing we need to do is understand electrons in atoms so that we can understand how these various atoms will join together, form bonds, share electrons, and form compounds. So chemical bonds are almost always formed by valence electrons interacting with each other. So basically separate atoms are going to, their valence electrons are going to interact and the goal is to get eight electrons around each atom in the valence shell. And that's called the octet rule. So basically atoms like to have eight electrons in their valence shell, all except for hydrogen, which is satisfied with two. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about exceptions. So the bottom line is that atoms will gain or lose electrons or they'll share electrons in order to have an octet, which is eight electrons in their valence shell. Now we've talked about ionic bonding and so that's where gaining electrons and losing electrons come in. In this case now we're going to start talking about sharing electrons when atoms join together with covalent bonds. Now, as I mentioned with hydrogen, the octet rule is not always satisfied for all elements at all times, but it is a really good rule of thumb and it applies in the vast majority of cases, but we will learn a few specific exceptions to the a few specific exceptions to the octet rule that you should keep in mind. Okay, so let's just look at the main group elements. And so I've labeled them in, on this periodic table. And I've labeled the number of valence electrons on each of those. Okay, now notice I've neglected the transition metals and you can too, all right? So every element in the first column has one valence electron. And so when we talked about uh, electron configurations, then that electron would be in 1s or 2s or 3s or 4s. The next column over, two valence electrons. So beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium all have two valence electrons. Then we skip over to the other side of the transition elements and we talk about boron, aluminum, gallium, indium, and all of these have three valence electrons, four valence electrons for carbon, silicon, germanium, five valence electrons for nitrogen, phosphorus, six valence electrons for oxygen and sulfur, seven for uh, for all the halogens. And then finally, um, the uh, noble gases here have eight valence electrons with the exception of helium, which has two valence electrons and it is satisfied with that. So, um, so basically what the goal is, is that each one of these elements wants to find a way to get to the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas in order to get an octet. So for instance, hydrogen gains one electron through sharing in this case, and we'll have an octet or actually, and we'll have a full shell configuration just like helium, which would be 1s2. Fluorine, if it gains one electron, it has the same electron configuration as neon and it has an octet. Oxygen, if it gains two electrons, then it's gonna have a full configuration octet just like neon. So gaining two electrons for nitrogen, it's gonna be three. Carbon normally shares, so we're gonna talk about carbon a bit. And then we're gonna also talk about some of these elements that actually would just prefer to lose an electron and go back to the next noble gas. So for instance, lithium will lose an electron and have the same configuration as helium. Sodium will lose an electron, have the same configuration as neon. Magnesium will lose two electrons and have the same configuration as ne neon. So you can see that you can use the periodic table to predict how many electrons would be either lost or gained by various elements on the periodic table. Okay, so I, did, I talked about, um, about electron configurations in previous videos. And basically, when we want to identify the valence electrons, what we're looking for are those found in the outermost shell, and that's going to be the highest end. So looking at fluorine, 
We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. That's the electron configuration. 1s2, those are core electrons, i.e. not valence electrons. N equals 2, that's going to be our, um, our valence shell. So fluorine has seven valence electrons, just like we saw in that periodic table we were just looking at. Carbon, so the core electrons are in the 1s, and the valence electrons are in the 2s and the 2p, and, the, and carbon has four valence electrons. Looking at aluminum, aluminum has core electrons in 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then the valence electrons are in the n equals 3 shell, and it has three valence electrons. So you can see how you can identify how many valence electrons a specific element has if you write out its electron configuration. So what about drawing Lewis dot diagrams? Basically what these are is a representation of the valence electron of an atom, and it uses dots around the symbol of the element. So for instance, hydrogen has one electron, and it exists in the 1s subshell, and so basically we're just going to put one dot by hydrogen. Now it doesn't matter where you put the dot, you can put it on that side, you can put it on this side, you can put it here or here. That doesn't matter, but the big thing is that it has one dot for every valence electron. Now you can't arrange any more than two valence electrons on a side. So we'll see that with a few other elements we're going to look at next. Okay, so I just mentioned hydrogen, and here's the electron configuration for hydrogen. So you can see there's the valence electron. There's the one dot on the Lewis dot diagram representing that one electron, that one valence electron. Helium, the electron configuration, 1s2, has two dots arranged around helium, and they're paired up together. Lithium, so we're going over to the other side of the periodic table now, where we have one valence electron, so it's in the 2s subshell, so if we look at the electron configuration, 1s2, there's the core electrons, we don't represent those around the Lewis dot diagram, we only put the valence electron there. There's one of those, so it has one electron dot shown with the lithium uh, elemental symbol. All right, and finally, uh, beryllium has two valence electrons in the 2s subshell, so it has these core electrons. They are not shown on the Lewis di dot diagram, but the valence electrons are, so beryllium is shown with two dots. So we've already done beryllium. Let's look at boron. So boron has three valence electrons. And so we can see the 2s2 and the 2p1. So we put two paired on one side. Those are the 2s and one unpaired. And again, we could put it over here. We could put it here. It doesn't really matter. We just need three valence electrons around boron. Carbon has four valence electrons. Now, they, there's two in the 2s and there's two in the 2p. So you'll see, um, you know, two paired for the 2s, and then there are three 2p orbitals, so you, so, and they'll be unpaired until they're forced to be paired. So we might write it where we have one electron separated from another electron. So, but notice we still have four valence electrons total. Now, carbon likes to form four bonds of one form or another, whether they're double bonds, four single bonds. So often you will see um, the Lewis dot diagram showing the four dots evenly distributed around carbon. So either way is completely fine. And finally, nitrogen has five valence electrons here. They're in the 2s and 2p. So again, paired for the 2s, and then there's the 2p unpaired until they're forced to be paired. Okay, and that shows five dots total. Let's move on to oxygen. Now we have six valence electrons, two of them paired, two of them paired in a p orbital, and then two unpaired electrons. Fluorine, similar situation, paired, 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 and one unpaired in one of the two p's. And then finally, neon showing the eight valence electrons all the way around. And neon has a full octet, octet of valence electrons. Now, uh, just to remind you, so basically, look at fluorine here, missing one valence electron. If it can find a way to share an electron with another compound, then, or share a pair of electrons, then it can have a noble gas configuration like neon. So basically, that's the goal.
All right, so let's think about Lewis dot diagrams for particular elements. So find aluminum on the, on the periodic table and find selenium on the periodic table. Pause the presentation and then try it, and then we'll go over the answers. All right, let's think about aluminum. Now, aluminum has uh, 3s2 and 3p1 as the valence configuration. So remember, those core electrons are still there, but they're not represented on our Lewis dot diagram. So, um, so we have the 3s paired here, and then we have that p electron right here. And remember, it could be here or here, and that would be totally fine. You could put the pair over here and the unpaired one over here. That's totally fine. What about selenium? So selenium has six valence electrons. Okay, so they're going to be paired for the 4s. And then we're going to put one, one, one for each of the p orbitals. But then we still have one more to place, so it's going to be paired in a p orbital. And the electron configuration for selenium actually looks a lot like that for oxygen. Okay, so now what about atoms with partially filled D or F subshells? Now these electrons are usually omitted from a Lewis electron dot diagram. So for iron, instead of putting in the 4s2 and the 3d6, then what we're going to do is just put in the 4s2. Okay, and so iron would just simply have these two electrons representing 4s2. Now, I just want to point out that introductory chemistry is not responsible for electron dot diagrams for transition metals. So you're only responsible for those metals that are in the main, uh, main group elements that I showed at the beginning of this presentation. All right, now another thing that's kind of interesting about this is that elements in the same column of the periodic table have similar Lewis electron dot diagrams. And basically, that's because they have the same valence shell electron configuration. So look at that first column of elements. Get out your periodic table and look at hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. And you're going to see that, the, that they each have one valence electron in their valence shell. So this will be n equals 1, n equals 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. But it's still just one electron in that highest n orbital. Now, remember that monatomic ions are atoms that have either lost electrons, and that's cations, or gained electrons for anions. And so we can draw electron dot diagrams for ions just as we can for atoms. Now, we do have to remove those electrons for cations, and then we have to add some for anions. So for instance, let's look at sodium. We're going to take sodium metal, and then we're going to take sodium cation. So the Lewis dot diagram for sodium metal is just simply one unpaired electron. And uh, sodium likes to form a plus one cation. And so we're, the Lewis dot diagram is just simply going to be the elemental sy symbol for sodium and a positive charge representing that lost electron. If we compare the electron configuration, here's our 3s1. That's where this lone electron is residing. and Here's the core electrons represented with the nearest noble gas configuration, which is perfectly fine. And then we notice for the sodium cation, we just have that noble gas configuration. So basically, only the original uh, valence shell is shown. So it's, it's occupied for, the, for sodium metal and unoccupied for the sodium cation. Now, when you make cations, electrons are going to be lost from the highest numbered shell, but not necessarily the last subshell filled. So let's look at a neutral iron atom compared to the iron 2 plus cation. So let's look right here. So here is iron metal, and here's iron 2 plus cation. Here's the electron configuration. So if we're filling and we're following the periodic table, we're going to fill the 4s2 first. And then we're going to start filling the three Ds as we move along the periodic table. Now, um, when iron forms a cation, it's going to lose the electrons in the 4s. So that makes it kind of easy to remember. So even though we filled these last, we still take those electrons from the highest N. So now for the iron 2 plus cation, 
the electron configuration is just going to be argon, which is the nearest noble gas, and 3d6, and we're going to indicate that this 4s2 is empty by just simply not writing it. Now again, I also want to emphasize that IntroChem is not responsible for electron dot diagrams for transition metals. Now, um, when compared to the original atom, anions have an extra electron. So let's look at a chlorine, a chloride, sorry, let's look at a chlorine atom and a chloride anion. So a chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. And so we can see them shown in the electron configuration. So here's neon, the nearest noble gas, plus the valence electrons. Now, if we add one more, um, electron to our chlorine atom, we're going to get a chloride anion. Here's our electron configuration for the core electrons, which is neon, and then now we have eight electrons in the, in the valence shell. So 3s2, 3p6. Notice that we have one more than we had for the chlorine atom. And now this electron configuration is actually like argon, as opposed to neon. Okay, so just a few comparisons, everything that we've looked at. So this is just a summary, so you can think about what we've just done. So sodium, iron, and chlorine. And just to summarize the concepts, uh, we use electron dot diagrams to uh, represent valence electrons around an atomic symbol. And so each electron is going to be represented with a dot. Now, when we make an electron dot diagram for cations, we're going to have fewer dots than the corresponding atom. So remember, we're going to remove electrons, and we're going to be left with a positively charged cation. If we're drawing an electron dot diagram for anions, then we're going to have more dots than the corresponding atom, basically just representing those electrons that we have added.